Ook Florian, we need to start. Today we talk about biodiversity in the Star Wars universe. This molecular biologist normally studies DNA traces in water. However, he's here today to talk about his other passion, biology in the Star Wars galaxy. Introducing Kevin Bainches. How does a naturalist researcher from planet Earth get involved in the Star Wars galaxy? Well, it's actually the other way around, because a long time ago in a town far, far away from here, I saw Star Wars for the first time on VHS, um, if you all know what that is. And I was about eight and I was hooked immediately. And then, well, I saw the other movies and I read the books and the comics. And then years after that, I started working with Naturalis. So. What stands out for a biologist watching Star Wars? Well, what's fun for me to see as a biologist is how a lot of the aliens in Star Wars have been inspired by real-world creatures that we all know. So, for example, the Bantas roaming through the deserts on Tatooine are basically like a herd of camels. But also the Ewoks from Return of the Jedi, they're basically bear cubs. Admiral Akbar, he's basically a goldfish in a, uh, an admiral's costume. So what's interesting to see is these planets all have only one sort of ecosystem. So Tatooine is a desert, Hoth is ice plains, Endor is a jungle, um, which also makes it easier for the viewers to see which planet we are currently on and make the story a bit more understandable. How did Star Wars influence the biodiversity on Earth? So the other way around, we see that a lot of creatures that are discovered on our own planet are named after, for example, characters from Star Wars or aliens from Star Wars. Star Wars. There's an acorn worm living in the ocean. It's purple and he's sort of got big floppy purple ears. And the researchers thought, well, that guy looked a little bit like Yoda. So they call him Purple Yoda, Yoda Purpurata. Uh, and on the other hand, there's a fish with like bulbous eyes and a a suction cup mouth, um, they named him after Greedo, the alien from the Star Wars Cantina scene, so that fish was called Pecoltia Greedoi. Something completely else is the trilobite called Han Solo, and uh, the researchers first claimed that it was named after the Han dynasty and being the only species in the genus, so Solo, but they later admitted that Han Solo was actually named after Han Solo. Sounds like a valid reason to watch Star Wars during office hours. Well, of course, by studying the biodiversity of Star Wars and talking to people about it, it's also a good way to get people more interested in the biodiversity of our own planet. When you're watching The Last Jedi, will you be looking for strange animals in the background? Uh, well, the first time I'm going to be watching the movie, I'll be paying attention to the storylines, but then the second, then the third, and the fourth time after that, I'll be looking more closely to the aliens in the background, yes. May the Force be with you in Star Wars.